Hello. Today we'll be talking about discrete probability distributions. And we'll be doing an experiment. Okay, first let's uh, sort of define these words here. What discrete probability means. Uh, and what's a distribution. Okay. Discrete probability. Well, a good example of discrete probability is like a coin. We can uh, flip a coin, we can get a head, or we can get a tail. But there are other, no other values. So that would be an example of discrete. There's no partly co head and partly tail, for example. Another good example would be a pair of dice, or a dice, roll of a dice. Uh, it's discrete outcomes. You can hit a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6, but there are no more outcomes other than that. Okay, and a distribution. That gets a little more tricky. All right, for that, uh, a little bit of room here. We'll talk about uh, the MN rule. The MN rule doesn't really tell you much about distribution, but it hints at it. Uh, MN rule is sort of a bit of magic here. Not magic, it's logic. We know sort of on an intuitive basis, if somebody asks us, uh, what are the chances of getting two heads in a row if we flip a single coin? Well, we kind of go, well it's, well, it's half a chance of getting heads, and it's um, half of that chance. So it's one half of one half a chance. Well, we could formalize that even better. It's one half times one half, and that equals one fourth. So this is a one fourth is the chance, the probability of getting two heads in a row. Okay, well, we can also say, well, what's the chances of uh, two tails in a row? Well, we have a half a chance of getting a tail, first flip, half a chance the second time, so we have a one quarter chance of getting tail, tail. Now, we don't have to get this, we could also get uh, head, tail, or tail, heads. Those are all the possible outcomes of this experiment. Uh, and when we talk about distribution, well, we have one quarter of the pie here, one quarter of the pie here. The rest of the distribution is going to be accounted for by these two pieces. Uh, but we'll use the binomial distribution for that. So far we've used what is known as the MN rule. That sounds like a big deal. It's not. Uh, M, N, rule. M is the first probability. N is the second probability. There could be a third one, or O, M, N, O, M, N, O, P, Q, as many as you like. For the coin toss, probability of heads for the first toss was one half, so their M is one half. Uh, N was also one half. So there was our probability of two heads in a row or two tails in a row. Uh, if we did three coin tosses, it would be MNO. So we would go one half times one half times one half equals one eighth. And that's our probability, a little crisper here, our probability of getting three heads in a row. And it's also equal to the probability of getting three tails in a row. But as you can see, we're missing lots of parts. Like, uh, what's the probability of uh, getting a tail for the first one and the rest of them heads? Well, it wouldn't all fit in this little bitty area that I have left here. So we'll go to the binomial distribution. Okay, the binomial distribution uses sort of a strange argument. 
it says that P plus Q to the N equals 1. Okay. Well, P is the probability of, say, being on, or, yeah, on would be a good way of putting it, like getting heads. And Q would be the probability of not getting heads, or not being on, so we'll call it off. And N will uh, be very useful for uh, the number of trials we're going to be dealing with. Okay, we'll be using this distribution today to describe what happens when we do a large number of trials of spins. Okay, this will be our experiment, by the way. Well, do my little cheat sheet here. This is a rather strange argument, okay, because the probability of something being on plus, plus the probability of it being off equals 1. So this argument is actually saying that 1 to the n equals 1. Well, yeah, it does. Okay, kind of strange. But it'll be useful. We'll see.